Well, social security numbers for sale on the dark web. It's where one Minnesotan stolen identity ended up, even when she thought she did everything right. Victims of ID theft are told over and over to contact the credit bureau. But what happens when the scammers trick the very people meant to protect you? Investigative reporter Lou Raguse shows us exactly what happens calls, thousands of dollars at calls. It's the nightmare. Um, Capital One, which was Menards. We all fear. Um, Chase, Bank of America. Identity theft. And for Marnie Ribnick, it's all too real. I don't want anybody to have to go through the aggravation that I went through. This case is kind of proof that you can do everything right yeah. and still get scammed. Yeah. It all started two years 22. ago when Marnie got um, word. This is the email that I got from them. That more than 20 new charge accounts had been opened in her name. And none of them were mine. Turns out Marnie was one of the victims when hackers broke into Equifax and stole financial information of millions of people. Computer forensics expert Mark Lanterman says much of it is still for sale. Your date of birth, your social security number. On what's known as the dark web, a secret side of the internet. I know pretty much everything financial about you. For years, we've heard experts say to protect yourself, do two things. Set up a freeze with the credit bureaus to block new accounts and set up monitoring to alert you about anything new and suspicious. I put freezes on all three credit bureaus. Marnie says that's exactly what she did. But just look. Um, it's my name, it was my social security number, and it's a forged signature. This is a copy of the counterfeit social security card in Marnie's name the scammers used to trick one of the credit bureaus into lifting her freeze opening the door to new fraudulent accounts. And so they tricked the credit bureau. Yes, I was stunned. I, I was I'd, the biggest knot in my stomach because I thought I did everything right. But that's so not all. To protect herself, Marnie mean, also paid um, to have the popular protect. service LifeLock monitor her credit. But just listen. Thank you for calling LifeLock. My name You're is about to hear a scammer you. pretending to be Marnie calling LifeLock. I was trying to access, I guess, my account all over the phone. It's somebody pretending to be me. Even though the scammer didn't know Marnie's special password. Can you verify your verbal passcode for me? Using that stolen information from Equifax, the scammer was able to answer security questions and change the password. So that did give me access to your account. So let's update that verbal password. They're letting her change the verbal password to something else. And if you're thinking it can't get worse, the scammers are about to use that new password to cancel her entire LifeLock account. I'm going to uh, cancel the membership. And to keep Marnie from getting an email okay, notice, they changed her update. email address too. Can you update my email address? Of course. She updated my email address to a fraudulent email address so I wouldn't get notified. This was unique and this was pretty extreme. Officer well, Gena Abramovich of the New Hope Police uh, helped Marnie get the phone and, tapes. Uh, we, I listened to them with Marnie. Uh, and they were uh, obviously not her, and it was kind of a shock. New Hope investigated as much as a local department could. Records show they even referred an address the scammers used to police in Chicago. But as it stands now, it doesn't look like there'll be any arrests. So we rely on uh, our partners. We rely on our par partners uh, at the state level, at the federal level, uh, because these, these crimes are complex. What's your reaction knowing that the thieves are probably going to go scot-free? It's really frustrating. It's everywhere you look. It's so prevalent everywhere that I, I think that they probably don't even know which direction to start. Marnie says she spent nearly 60 hours just on phone calls, canceling phony accounts. April. And although she hasn't had to pay for the false charges, April. her nightmare may not April. be over. All I need is a first name, last name, and state. Back on the dark web, we discover thieves still selling social security numbers, including Marnie's. Social security number costs $6, a bargain at twice the price. In a statement, LifeLock told us they don't comment on specific cases, but that they have stringent procedures in place to prevent and address unauthorized access to member accounts. Meanwhile, if you want more information on how to protect yourself or what to do, if you think you've been a victim of ID theft, we posted some great tips on care11.com.
makes me frustrated just watching it. I, I can't Absolutely. imagine the amount of time and frustration. I know you said 60 hours, mm -hmm. but that's something too that you're just constantly oh, you thinking about, thinking worrying about. about. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? That, that's the biggest toll usually. I right. mean, if people can get the money back, that's great, but you can't get that time back. Right. And right. it's so frustrating. Her social security it's still there. Still Six dollars. I almost don't want her to know that. No, that I know. Sad. That's sad. Thank you, Lou. Mm -hmm.